Hello everyone, George here, and we're back inside of Substance Painter working on Pirate's Cove after I took forever getting uh, the text to work properly in the last video. So here we go, we've loaded it back up into our scene. Let's start getting things to work the way we want them to work. So now that we've gotten the text up there and we have this stuff going on over there, we probably want to dirty some stuff up as usual. Before we do that, I should probably jump in on these curtains though. So let's go ahead to the stars, I'm guessing that's it. And let's look at our materials and see what we have to work with. So some of these fabric rough, fabric rough, let's make them larger here. So we've got a few fabrics to work with right off the right off the start. Uh, fabric soft denim, rough and rough denim. So let's, I want to check out Substance Painter's website. Now that I've got my internet back, we can actually check a few things out and see what they have because I remember seeing a few of them that I really liked. Um, at least the underlying pattern of it. I'm going to have to use my star pattern uh, on, for the top, but I want to get the height in the normal map down. So let's go to fabrics. Wow, 255. So we can see like this climbing rope one. The color's all wrong, but it's got a very thick texture like you would see in curtains. So we've got co cotton. We've got cotton. Lycra. That's cool. Hmm, what else we got here? So I'm looking for something that's pretty rough and a thick texture. That's cool. I like that pattern a lot. Silk fabric, silk fabric grid. This is kind of interesting because I could pretend, potentially use the color of that to help me create some sort of, uh, you know, different, different, um, I don't know, gradation, whatever you want to call it. So we're not going to do silk or satin. Um, what else? This is a nice one. Polyester checker. Kind of like that. We might check that one out. Spandex zigzag. I think I'm going to go with the polyester. Synthetic jersey perforated tremblay. Hmm. Oh, they have a lot of these. Look at all of them. Polyester square fabric looks pretty good, too. This is going to be a hard decision. Oh, woven. Woven looks interesting. Wow. Fabric patterning. Wow. Okay, let's go back up a little bit um, and see if I can find the one. Let's see. So I think I want to go maybe with this acrylic cotton stripes. Really like kind of what's going on in there. I'm a little worried, though, about the lines going through it. That might be a little bit too much for what I want to do. This one I like, the square fabric. It's got those little bit of lines in them, which might be nice with the stars. Although, I don't know. The stars themselves might not need much else. So technical fabric bold. That's an interesting one. Let's go with the technical fabric bold. I got a bunch more downloads because I hit another month of uh, subscribing to Substance Painter and the rest of the products, so I can throw away a couple downloads. I'll probably use them in another project anyway, coming down the line. Oh, look, that one even has stars on them. Not the same, but it does have stars. That's not so bad, right? And anything else that I want to try? I'm thinking about one of these. Let's grab acrylic cotton brushed as well. Okay, so there's a technical fabric. Let's throw that on there. Whoa, that is a pattern. <laughs> okay, um, not quite what I was expecting. Let's rotate this maybe 45 degrees. Jeez, uh, UV scale. That's two, a four. Okay, how about five? That is a pattern. Let's get my texture in here. So file, uh, import resource, add resource. We want not Steam apps. We want to go to this PC, speed, uterbs, reproduce it, FNAF, and doo -ba -doo -ba -doo, textures, right? And there's backstage. Supply closet. Where is the, here we go. Pirate Cove curtain stars. Let's call this a texture and import resources to the current session. Go ahead and import. Now we've got our texture right there. 
And if we come over here, can I place a texture on top of this or do I need to just let it be? Let me add, so that's height. So height adds a lot of maybe way too much actually to it. Uh, hmm. So there's our color. Can I choose, I guess I can't choose a, uh, something to go on top of it there, huh? Yeah, okay. Now what I can do is I can bring this in as another layer. So let's go new layer, bring this in as the base color for it. And there you can see what's going on. And now I get to decide whether or not the technical fabric is what I like or something else. Now the technical fabric has a lot of, a lot going on and it's, I'm not, actually not a big fan of it right now. Let's scroll on down. That's technical fabric bold that we were just looking at. So I want the other one I just downloaded, which is what? Let's go with the acrylic cotton one and see what that does for us. So let's crank that up to maybe like six. Interesting. I think it's got too much shininess to it. That's for sure. Uh, what if we put, so we put, wow. Yeah, height is way too much. Do not need that. I don't really need the color, so that can go. Roughness, heightness, and metal. So it doesn't have metal to it, so that shouldn't matter either. You know what? I'm kind of enjoying that. I can see that working for us. So I think I'll, I'll go with that for what we're dealing with. Now I do want to see if I can't pop in another ambient on this um, to get the folds to pop out a little bit better. So let's go to project and ambient occlusion there, throw that in there, and then do a, maybe a color burn or something. Way too much, obviously. So let's color burn. What else do we have? We have just overlay. Let's do, yeah, we're going to want maybe just a little bit darker. So I'm used to these being the way Photoshop has them in groups, not quite the way it is inside of here. There's multiply. So let's turn that off and on and we can see that adds a nice, a nice bit in there. I'm going to turn off. The only thing I want this one to affect is the color of it. So that's it. Okay. I'll, I think I'll take that for the curtains. Although, so that's the height. I don't have a height map, so it doesn't matter. There's the roughness. Roughness is pretty low. I might crank, yeah, the roughness up just a tiny bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so we've got that set up for us. And actually, while we're here, why don't we go ahead and um, corrupt it a little bit? Or that is, make it look a little crappy on the bottoms. And let's try the sulfur rock test again. So there's a sulfur rock. Let's go in here. Ah, you know what? Let's not do sulfur rock. Sulfur rock's got those problems um, with a few different things. Let's try, I might just jump back into the rust bandwagon. It's a really versatile material that I've used for a lot of things. And if we bring rust into here and we go here to purple, dark, dark purples, very dark actually. That's good. Um, there's height. Let's go to technical parameters. I'm going to make the height. There should be no height. It, it, yeah, it should, it's supposed, just supposed to be like dirt and debris that's on this thing. Um, trying to see if I can tank this thing to be a little bit more purple. Maybe like that. That's not so bad. Maybe that. Okay, so now let's go to our smart masks. Let's grab that moss from the... No, I want uh, ground dirt throw that on there. So now we've got a nice little bit of, uh, well, just something nasty going on on the floor side of this, which I like. Gives it some more character. Okay, so moving on, we now need to deal with the floor, I think. So let's see, wood. Let's check out what I've got in terms of, I'm not going to finish that sentence. Uh, let's see what I have. So we have Amer wood American cherry. That's not so bad. Let's increase that maybe to four. Now that's not adding indents into the flooring, which I'm not particularly happy with. So let's, uh, mahogany, we can go with that. So throw that in there, get rid of that one. Now those are planks. Uh, it's got a nice sheen to it as well. That could work for us. Let's increase the number to two. Not so bad. I think we're going to go with three though. 
That's quite a lot of, that's very thin boards, I, I suspect. But yeah, you know, we'll go with that, I think. So let's add a height map in there so we actually get a little bit coming off of there. But I do want to see if I'm screwing myself a little bit here. I'm going to reduce that range a bit. Okay. I don't, I just want a little bit of height coming up from them. And really, we should probably do the same thing we just did before. Let's grab uh, the ambient occlusion on this one and cause it to hit a little bit harder. So I don't need it to influence any of these other elements. Project. And I just want the ambient around the edges to come through. So there we go. And did that do anything? Oh, wrong layer. That, no, that is the right layer. What are you doing to me? There we go, color. Bam. Okay, so there's the ambient occlusion. Now let's go here and maybe multiply it. What do we got? So we got a little bit. Can we do something a little bit harsher? Let's go with color burn, maybe. Actually, let's take that layer and let us add a filter. Let's do a blur. And let's see what we can do with that intensity. I just want to kind of push it further in, quite a bit further in, actually. Now, if I play around with some of this stuff, let's just try. And multiply is not enough. So I blurred it, but by blurring it, I'm screwing it up. So let's rotate on that and do a levels and now push that in. Hmm. And let's go back to the blur and maybe back that down a little bit. And for this again, let's do, um, not very happy with multiply. Darkens crap. Linear burn is, is dead, deadly. Guess we'll stick with multiply for right now, just to give it a nice edge. Um, yeah, we'll do that. I still want to dirty the floor up a little bit, so let's find a dirt material. I thought I had something that I could work with. Kind of want to get away from using rust over and over and over again. But, I mean, if it works... So there's just dirt right here. We could go up here, throw that down, see what we get. So there's quite a bit of it, a little excessive. Uh, so there's the base. It's a gradient. Let's see what they do. So that's that. That's that. And that's 99% of it right there. So let's see. The height is ever so slightly up. So we're going to kind of crank that down a little bit, I think. Roughness is good. This will adjust the histogram. So let's see what we can do with that disorder. Not doing much. Invert. Nope. Random, random. That's the dirt texture that we're working with. I don't... I guess we need to edit this part, the mask on it. Whoa, yeah, no. Something like that, I think. And can I... kind of want to back it off a little bit. It's a little bit much. I just want a little bit of something going on here. I don't want to push it too far. So what does it look like? Does it just look like junk? Or does it actually add something to the scene? I mean, it definitely is adding something, a little bit. I'll keep it for now. I can always come back and change it, right? That's my decision. Now, I do have some AO problems over here, you can see. Um, not exactly sure. I mean, I can come back in here and get rid of the AO map on that. Uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Let's go to the lights. 
This is going to be an interesting one. So we want to grab the same material. So we're going to go with that painted one that we used elsewhere. So where is that? Painted metal. Painted steel. So that's a good start. Um, except I'm going to make these ones more, more gray, I think. Yeah, like that. And I don't remember, are these the same or are they different? I think we're going to need to use an emissive texture. Before we actually dive into using the emissive texture though, I think we need to test what happens with the emissive textures we create. And since the internet's back, why don't we go ahead and do so inside of here? So we need to do an export out of Maya for the, um, what's it called? The, uh, these, the uh, power switches, the door stuff. Let's go ahead and do a display show all. Save really quick. Let's find my uh, security room. There it is. Oh, that's not included. Okay, that's not good. Why are you not included? Where are you? Oh, okay, come on up to the security room. Now that one I haven't duplicated yet, so when we bring it over, we're not going to get it on the other side of the door, but I'm not going to care about that at the moment. Let's just see what we get. So export selection to security room. Did I do the right one? File, sent Unity selection. Yes. Security room. Yes. Let's jump back over to Unity. Give it a second. Now we should have... Yes, we have both. Now let's take a look over here. Grab this and begin setting up our textures. So we've got the light switch right there. We will have to eventually create a script for this, obviously, but for right now we'll ignore it. So light textures are in here. That's been locked. No, it hasn't. Lock you. Security room, texture, security room, light switch. And we're dealing with light switch, light switch, M. One, two, and three. Fix now. Good. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the buttons. Button, button, who's got the button? So that's the door. Door is green by default. So that's our, our albedo trans, whatever, transparency. Uh, Here's our emission. Emission has to be turned on. That's right. Emission. Uh, let's do this. Ooh, bright. Metallic and normal. Fix now. Okay. So I like that. I'm actually really liking that. And I believe... Uh, emissivity can be done real time in Unity, if I remember correctly. Yeah, global illumination, real time. That means we will hopefully get a little bit of light off of that one. So now we're going to go to the light itself. This one by default is gray. So let's go to gray right here. Light, gray. Open that up. And this is light switch, light switch, gray emission. Did I not name something properly? Do I have a, a, a gray missing? GGG M. Light switch door M normal. R R R. Hmm. Looks like I screwed something up. Hold on one second. Light switch, light switch, light switch, light switch. M normal. We have gray. And we have a normal. Well, let's go with what we know. We know this is for the light switch, and that's the albedo one, and that's gray. That name is slightly messed up. Let me fix that really quick. Uh, now we know we have an emissive part right there. Now that's completely black, it looks like, for when it's gray. Uh, hold on, no. That's the emission one. Correct? Yeah. We have metallic smoothness. Now all we're waiting on is the... This one, I believe. So we can throw that under normal. And fix now. And that's it. Let's put the yellow one on there, just so that we can get a sense of what that's looking like. So there's yellow. Um, 
Here's emission. Metallic. That should be the same. And the normal should also be the same. Okay. So that's the two colors that we're dealing with right there. Um, I'm liking it. The emission looks like it's, it's working out okay. Uh, you know, and it'll, it'll be bright when we click the, the different elements. And the little swirly thing is probably going to end up looking better on these lights in Substance Painter than they technically do there. So it should be okay. All right, so let's minimize Unity. Come back over here now and get to work. So these should be lit brightly uh, with probably... So what did we do over in Maya? So in Maya, they are lit up and they have a slight yellow to them. And then that sort of light filter. So let's go to... This is the light. Can I... Are these part of the same thing? Or are they separate elements? Let's go right-click... Um, add a oh we need a new layer new layer let's go to right click add black mask and now let's see what we can do here nope i'm gonna have to select the whole thing inside and out so let's be very careful whoops wrong one there we go so actually it's probably just going to be easier to do it this way so like they all share the same material and texture in a UV space, so shouldn't be a problem. Okay, looks like that's clean. So, actually, right-click, let's invert that. There we are. Now we can add... Now this layer gets to become the one that we want to work with, right? Yeah. So selecting this, let's go with some sort of a base color. Like that, I guess. And let's add emissivity. So we need to go here and choose emissive and add emissive right here. And we need to go into this layer now and we need to add a paint on top of that so that we can put the texture on there. So looking at our alphas, the paint brushes do well. They look kind of like a flashlight. Uh, the brush rotated probably is going to work even better if, you, if we think about it. Let's go straight on with one of these things like that. Maybe give ourselves a little bit more real estate space, something like that. And now that we're on paint, we can go to brush and select this again. Whoops. So what are you affecting? Oh, you're affecting that. I actually want to paint a dark color, don't I? But I want it to build up. So our stroke opacity needs to be quite low. And let's, let's rotate this thing a little bit. And then maybe I will do a very harsh one now from something like this. So let's do, still learning those darn buttons. Maybe we'll do that now. Something like that just to give it a little bit of a, a break from what's going on. So now that we have that, we can come back here. We have the base color selected. Now the emissive color, we're gonna select probably a more pronounced yellow. I don't know. Let's go with something like that, I think, for right now. Now, I would like that to splash out onto these other elements, but I don't think we're going to get there. Now, do I have a texture that I can work with that's kind of like a fence or a grid shape that I can... Uh, wrinkles, wrinkles might work. Veins will not work. I want more of something structured. Let's see. Almost like these lines, but taking t two of them... Actually, maybe if I took sandpaper and did it vertically and then horizontally, it would do what I want. 
not frog skin. Cracks. It's close. I don't think I'm going to find it. Let's try. Let's try the vertical and the horizontal. Let's do the sandpaper. So zoom back in on one of these. Let's go back to paint. Grab this. Rotate that around. And let's try this again. There's that. And then I'm going to rotate if I can ever remember the buttons, the hotkeys. There we go. For that as well. And that's all I want is that kind of crisscross going on with that. So that's that's it. That's all I wanted with that. Um, now we need to start aging some of these elements, adding a little bit more of the uh, that stuff that we need to make them interesting looking. So let's go to the sign. That's the sign, right? No. Let's go to the text. Let's save it before I lose it. And once again, we will probably... So let's say that's got metal underneath of it. Let's do something other than rust this time. Let's do dark metal right here. Oh, that's the wood. Whoops. Control X, text, control V. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm gonna do here is subtract this away. And if I remember how what I'm doing right here, I should be able to get this to work right. We're gonna see what happens here. Um, let's do a add black mask and let's try a generator this time. So generator, select generator. Let's just try the metal one. That's low. I kind of like that actually. It's got the sides really nice. And it even makes the cutout somewhat important now. It's not so much of a, a mess up. Let's uh let's play around a little bit. So there's the wear contrast. I don't want it to be too much. That's yeah, too much. Do triplanar. Now that I'm doing triplanar though, I should probably back down that contrast a little. Grunge amount. So that's that part of it. We're going to keep that not so, not so in our face, I think. Edge smoothness. Ambient masking. It's not doing a whole lot for us. Oh, wow. It does eventually do a whole lot. All right. I'm going to go with that. I actually like that a lot. That adds a lot of something to it. And I think I'm going to use that same, uh, this. Let me copy that and bring it to the exterior part of this. Yeah. Yes. And in fact, I think I might just leave it as is for the moment. I like that. Now I need to do, to do the same thing now on these lights though. So let's go to the light. I am probably need to be careful. Ooh, it even added a nice little darkening effect in there. But I probably do need to do something about that. So let's go to paint and paint over that slightly. Grab, I don't know, dirt maybe. And what color am I working with? I'm working with white right now. So let's do... Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh no, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do the opposite. I want to do black. Whoops. Okay. We can go with that, I think. All right, good. Now we just have that sign to deal with, and I think we're done with the substance version of Pirate Cove. I did spell that right. Yeah. So the sign, what does a sign look like again? Maya, please help me out. Whoa, computer's running slow. Sorry, out of order. Okay. So we need text, which means I'm going to need to jump into... Oh, Photoshop. Oh, I wish this program had a text generator. That would make this, that would really bring it up. It probably does, and I just don't know about it. So let's do create new. 1024. Create. Um, black is the background. Shift F5. Enter. 
and some text, and then what? Sorry. Sorry, your princess is in another castle. Let's see. Put this somewhere here ish. Sorry. Out of order. Bring this down to maybe 400. Sorry, can stay the size it is. Let's change the font. Something cursify. Something that people might want to actually see. And probably can read. That looks, that almost looks like you're thrown in their face. That's not a good font for this. Definitely not that, not Black Adder. I might go with Brussels. And this out of order is a little bit too intense, I think, now. I think that'll work. Make that 350. Okay, how about 320? All right, you know what, let's make that 310 instead. That's a good bit. Uh, it's pretty much almost centered. We're good now. File, save as, and PNG, textures, and sorry, out of order. Okay, substance painter, and file, import, resource. Oh, I'm losing my voice, I think. Uh, textures. And FNAF SP, textures, and text. Sorry. And alpha. Current session, import. So there it is. It's now in our, no, we don't want to be in a paint layer. We want to be in the sign layer. And the sign is, I think, white. And I think I want it to be sort of wood behind it, which is what I have going on here. So... Yeah, let's go with that. So, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, materials, let's find a nice wood. Something that makes sense. So these are too, too shiny. You wouldn't spend money on that. I do have the rotten wood one. We could give that a go. That looks pretty pathetic. There is a color to it, so I mean, I guess I could push that up there. Or throw another texture on top of it. See that that just looks wrong though. Let's let's keep it rotten looking. And maybe put plastic glossy on top of it. And make that more of a white color. Maybe push it towards the yellow range. a little bit maybe I don't know what I'm doing um, and uh, increase roughness a little and then now put it on there um, although I really kind of want to burn in some detail on this uh, let's first right click uh, or just put in a new layer and let's make it base color black and we'll probably end up having it replace things. I'll pop its height up a bit. The roughness on this layer will be high-ish with no metal. Now let's add the black mask. Let's go to alphas and grab our alpha. So where is that? Sorry, out of order. Let's uh, increase that opacity, straighten it out, or actually maybe it'd be better if it's not straightened out. And then change the color to, actually I do want it to be white, don't I? I'm wondering. And what if we did Filter on that. 
lightly blur it just a little bit so it's not so perfect. Okay. I think I can live. Oh, you see the back of that? I don't even know if I properly did the UVs on this one. See that? <laughs> oh boy. I wonder. Let's let's hit what is it? So there that no, okay. So good. I can get rid of that. That's not a problem. Let's uh just go right over that. Oh. Not good. Oh man. Um there we go. That's better. Wow. Perfect. Okay. Now we're back where we want to be. Now we just got to grungeify it a little bit. And I think for that, I am going to use the, you know, the typical techniques that I've been showing over and over and over again, the same lame ones. Got to learn some new ones, probably. I just got to play around a little bit more. And mask it, mask it, mask it, mask it. And let's try. I wonder. Not a fan of that, of that one. Not a fan of that either. But just surface worn. That is interesting. Can I invert that? That might be the best thing to do. Yeah, just a little bit like that. I kind of like that. All right, I'm going to go with that. Okay, so what's left to mess with? That's all done. That's all done. The curtain's got some junk on it. That's done. The floor's got some goo. Everyone's set up, I think. So now we can save this. Control S, right click, and do a giant export, I think. So export textures on out. Let's go here and create a folder. Um, I need a quick folder to this thing. Let's go to textures. That's my other project. That's not it either. That's not it. All right. All right, let's go to Pirate Cove. In there, select folder. We're gonna go 2048 on everyone for right now. Um, the sign probably doesn't need 2048, so we'll back that one down to 1024. Uh, yeah, I like that. Change this over to Unreal, or Unity, 5, Metallic, and let's hit Export. All right, let's open that folder up and paste it into our Unity folder. So there it is. Grab that, copy, and reproduce. Assets, level, security room, textures. Oh, wait, I don't want that. I want, so that's security room. I want a new one. I want one section simply for Pirate Cove. Okay, there we go. And paste. That's kind of redundant, isn't it? Control A, Control X, paste, delete, and now we've got our textures. Let's start freeing up some memory on my system. Save that really quick, close it on out, and jump into Maya now. Let's grab Pirate Cove and export that out. So it still has the multiple uh, curtain elements, right? Yes. So we're going to have to deal with that, obviously. But uh, that's selected. We can now go to File, send the Unity selection. When I do that, though, I'm going to want to... I don't feel like continuing to push out things. So let's go to Embedded... Okay, Embedded me, uh, Media is off. We can go up. Where's Pirate Cove? There it is. 
Now inside of Security Room, that is the FBX for Security Room. Okay, so we're going to go into Pirate Cove and save Pirate Cove in there. In which case, I am then going to go to New Folder and then say Pirate Cove or Textures or whatever is necessary. I'm trying to remember what my, my format is for this project because it's a little bit different than what I normally do. So that's generating the metadata. Here's hoping it works. So there we go. It did that nonsense. We can come back over here now. Close security room. Let's go in here to Pirate Cove. There's that. I think the material didn't come across though. So I am going to need to delete the Pirate Cove that's already in here. So let's do that. So, Pirate Cove, frame on up. I don't know if I had any scripts going on with this. So let's see, Pirate Cove does not look like I had a manager or anything, so that's good. So this will be easy to fix. Let's delete Pirate Cove. Uh, I am going to delete the Pirate Cove that's in here. So we'll get rid of that and this Pirate Cove. And we'll come in here now and fix this Pirate Cove. We'll drop it in. Looks like it's slightly out of place. Is it just me or is it? Jeez. All right, hold on. Yeah, there's something out of place about it, so I got to figure that out, why it's not up there where it should be but anyway let's just get it where it's supposed to be let's turn lights on and just manually move this thing to where it should be for now at least i should really have that on the floor shouldn't i so let's just do that and like that okay Let's set up those textures now while we're in here. So Pirate Cove, there's a whole lot of stuff we gotta mess with. Let's lock you down. Let's go to, let's see, Pirate Cove. Let's see, how did I do it? And Security Room has a Materials and a Textures. So under there, I wanna have, under Pirate Cove, I wanna have a Materials and a Textures as well. And then I wanna grab all of these textures and stick them in there. Come back over here now, wait for that to regen, and then apply them as I see fit. And I should bring the materials for this and put them in that folder as well, a material folder, so that everything's organized properly. Okay, so you are coming along. Let's go to textures. That's a security room. I want this one, this one, and curtain, stars, albedo, yeah, I like that. Um, metallic. Yeah, a little bit of a sheen. And now normal should really make it come to life. Fix that. And there we are. Yeah, very nice. Okay, next up is... Um, what is that? Exterior. So this. Lock, unlock. Or unlock, lock. And exterior. So one. Two. And... Three, fix. Great. Now we have lights. Grab a light. Unlock lock. Open that up. So we've got the light. Let's open up emission. Let's grab emission. Uh, we will grab metallic and then we will put normal. There we go. So there's our lights. Uh, what's up next? So actually, let me do... Good. So we've got lights. Now we have the sign. Let's grab the sign. Bam, bam. Open. And... One. Two. Three. Fix. Good. And now we just have, I think, this part. So that should be, oh no, we still have the wood portion of it. 
and three, fix. Great, so now we have Pirate Cove up there. Although I still feel like if it was backlit in purple, it would look even better, but maybe not, not this time. Okay, let's add the floor in. I think I'm definitely losing my voice now. All right, so that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll jump back in and cover up some more of these ugly textures with Substance Painter stuff soon enough. All right, so long, goodbye.